Hey guys, welcome to the video, Salt here. Today, we're going to be going over the primary weapon, the Rauta. Now in this weapon series, I take a weapon, I build it out, and I test that weapon on its own merits, meaning I don't mix it with any kind of external factors that would increase weapon performance. That would be things like Warframes using abilities, pets putting statuses on enemies, things like that. I just test the weapon built out by itself, and I let the viewers make their own intelligent conclusions about adding those external things. So the Rauta was suggested to us by commenter Dosa Narcosa, and that's why we're doing it today. We have the top commenter and the first commenter of the last video, which is the same person. It's Finns OT Grow Hick 59. I'll take a take a look at the router here. So it's the shotgun. This came out with Calervo, and so Calervo has a little bit added effects uh, with the shotgun. Now I have two builds today for this. I have a damage build and I have a ZDPS utility build. I believe that the way to play this shotgun is actually the ZDPS utility. I, I think the damage build is good, but I think there's weapons that are better in the game than than the uh, the route of damage build. But I have both of them to show, just you know, to to give options for people. So let's go into the build here, and we're gonna go over the combo first, and then after we'll go we'll come back and we'll go over the main, which is the damage build. So first I want to go over unique and interesting things about the Rauta. You know, why is this called the combo build? Well, it's because of the Rauta's uh, unique effect. Each pellet landed gives you plus two melee combo count uh, per shot capped at 28. So every shot is capped at 28, which would mean that at 14 pellets landed would give you your, your cap per shot. So if you look here, our multi-shot is 17. So we have a little bit extra. You know, we have a little bit over 14 there. So in case you miss a couple of uh, pellets in your spread. All right. Um, so, you know, why would you need this? Why, what would you use this for? This would be for a melee build that doesn't really have a use for their primary slot. So why not use the router in your primary slot and... Uh, you know, you can just pump yourself right up to 12 times combo in like two seconds right at the start of the game. Or if you're going for an objective and you lose your combo while you're doing it, uh, you can just quickly get your combo right back. So that's what makes this a, a utility build. It's not really meant for damage. It's meant for utility. So let's go over the mods here. We have Hell's Chamber for multi-shot. Shotgun Elementalist for magazine capacity and primed ammo stock for magazine capacity. Now, you need to land eight shots for you to be at 12 times combo. If we take off shotgun elementalist, you'll notice with just primed ammo stock, we are at eight shots. So technically you don't need shotgun elementalist for, for more magazine capacity. However, like that's really, really tight. If you miss a single shot, then you're at only at 10 times combo. So I feel like Shotgun Elementalist just gives you a little bit of leeway. It gives you a little bit of leeway to accidentally miss a shot and, and still have more shots in your magazine before you have to go for a reload. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to type in Shotgun Elementalist. We can put it back on the build here. For that reason, I think that's why uh, Shotgun Elementalist is worth it. It just gives you a little bit extra leeway. So those were the two for the magazine capacity. Tainted Shell is going to give us accuracy. Accuracy is going to narrow that spread and make more of your pellets actually hit the target instead of like going on the sides of the enemy. Now, unfortunately, Tainted Shell gives us a negative fire rate. But don't worry, we're going to make up for it. The entire bottom row of this build is fire rate mods. So we go to the, <laughs> we go to the bottom row here. We have Shotgun Barrage for 90 fire rate, Accelerated Blast for 60 fire rate, Vigilante Favor for 45 fire rate, and Frail Momentum for 90 fire rate. And in fact, there's actually one more fire rate mod, but it's a conditional that you need to reload for first. So I didn't put it on the build, but I was damn sure tempted. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. In the exit slot, we're going to go with Soft Hands. Uh, so when you go to equip the router 
and you're going for your combo, you're going to get your negative uh, 40% weapon recoil and plus 40% accuracy for 8 seconds, which is perfect. We actually want both of those things. Accuracy, again, is going to narrow that spread. And weapon uh, negative weapon recoil is going to uh, help the weapon not jump super uh, a lot. The weapon's still going to jump. It does kick a lot, but it's, this is going to help it a little bit. Okay, and in the um, arcane slot here, we're going to go for primary dexterity. So this is a ZDPS build. We're not actually going for damage on this build. And dexterity is just going to give you plus 7.5 seconds of combo duration. So why not? You know, why not get a buff on your primary weapon for your melee weapon if you're, uh, you know, doing a melee build? So that, that's how this works. This is going to get you to 12 times combo in about like two seconds. I'm going to go to the simulacrum and just show uh, how this works and what it looks like. And then we'll go over the damage portion of the uh, build. The of creatures you have immortalized would cry out in thanks. I bet they would. I bet they would, Cephalon Samaris. All right, so I have a little melee weapon on here, and I have my router. I'm at no combo right now. I guess it would help if I spawn some enemies in. There we go. Okay, so eight eight shots hit should be at uh, twelve times combo. So let's let's test that out here. So one. Now it's eight. I go to my melee weapon, and we see it's at twelve times. Now I'm going to let that fall off, and this time I'm only going to shoot seven times, and we'll see at seven times I should only be at ten times combo. All right, just fell off. I'm going to go back to my router, make sure it's reloaded. I missed a shot, so it's going to be less. Yeah, it's at nine times. So I missed one of those shots uh, because of the stagger. And that, that's another reason why I think um, uh, Shotgun Elementalist is worth it. Because sometimes when you shoot these dudes, they like stagger to the left or the right, and you'll miss like a follow-up shot. Uh, so let me try to get seven again. All right, that was seven hit. And I'm at 10 times. Yep. So eight shots. It takes eight shots to be at that 12 times. But you see, it only takes about two seconds. So that's pretty much the router build for the uh, ZDPS utility. I believe this is the proper way to play the router. I think the damage build is good. But I, I just think there's uh, you know other damage weapons that are better. But I still want to show it off. So let, let's head back. And we're going to um, show off the damage build now. Okay, so um, this is the damage build, but there's actually two mod slots that I'm going to... I'm going to do a five-minute run on the, for the gameplay, and then I'm going to do another five-minute run with two different mods. And we're going to kind of test this together, because I tested a lot of this build except for uh, two of the mod slots. So there, were, there was two mods on one build and two mods on another build that I wanted to kind of uh, compete with each other and see which one did better. Uh, so I, th I thought it would be fun to maybe do that on this video. So what I did do a lot of testing on, though, was the elements. So as you see here, I have uh, Viral Heat for the Rata. The first thing we want to look out for the, for the Rata is that it actually has a pretty high natural slash weighting. The natural slash weighting, um, with all the mods and everything, is uh, 312. And our viral and our heat are is 624. So the slash is definitely less than them, but it's still pretty respectable. You're still going to get a good amount of slashes. Um, so that, that's really nice. Okay, so I did a lot of testing on these elements here. I'm using both 6060s to make viral. And I'm using scattering inferno, which is the 6060 heat, and blaze, which is the 60 heat and 60 damage, to make heat. Uh, heat only comes in one mod, but that's okay. It, it, both of these are heat. Um, what I originally tried when I was first testing this, I was trying to use both of these prime mods here, because if you notice, this weapon has horrible crit chance, uh, and it has a average crit multiplier. So this is a very bad crit weapon. So it's, it's a full status weapon and full status weapons are usually just built out for unga bunga damage. And you can get more Unga Bunga damage by using the big prime mods. And so that was my original thought, was uh, to, to try to use both of them. So in fact, I first started 
with Viral Electric, because I wanted to use Primed Charge Shell as well. And Viral and Electric was doing pretty good, but it wasn't doing as well as Viral Heat. So Viral Heat was easily beating out Viral Electric. So I was like, okay, I guess I can't use Prime Charge Shell. That's fine. Um, but I was I was still trying to use Prime Chilling Grasp on the Viral setup here. And when I tested the Viral setup with Prime Chilling Grasp versus the Viral setup with Frigid Blast, Frigid Blast was actually doing better. And it's because when you use Prime Chilling Grasp, your Viral weighting is going to go up so high that you're no longer getting a lot of heat procs and you're no longer getting a lot of the natural slash procs. So you're missing out on two really strong dots there. So I was actually getting more damage out of using the 6060 cold. So that, that's why we settled on the build here. Um, one thing that was very close and I couldn't really tell the difference between these, these two, let me just type it here, was incendiary coat versus blaze. Um, very, very similar. One's 60 heat, one's 90 heat, except Blaze gives you 60% damage as well. I couldn't tell the difference in, in my testing, so that's up to you. You could always you could always switch this around. Incendiary Coat will increase your uh, heat weighting to be a bit higher. Uh, higher heat weighting is not a bad thing, though. Higher viral rating is, is not necessarily good. Okay, so I did a lot of test, testing on the elements, and this is what I ended up for the, uh, the best elements here. So let's go over the mods on the top now. So we have Galvanized Hell for multi-shot. We have Galvanized Savvy for status chance and direct damage per status type effect in the target. Vigilante Armaments for 60% multi-shot. Semi-Shotgun Cannonade, which is going to be 240% flat damage and a 1.5 punch through. And then the Exilus, we're going to use Galvanized Acceleration. This is going to increase our fall off. So this is a shotgun. Pretty much all shotguns in the game have fall off, which means they start doing less and less damage. Uh, when when enemies are further and further out. And Galvanized Acceleration just kicks that range out, so you can do maximum damage at longer ranges. And then in the Arcane slot, oh my goodness, we're finally not using Merciless or Deadhead. What the hell is going on here? Uh, well, it's because this is an Unga Bunga weapon, and you get pretty much all of your damage on the build itself. And so you actually have space on the Arcane slot to pick something fun instead of just flat damage. So we're going to go with Shotgun Vendetta. Um, so on a shotgun kill within 5 meters of the target, you get 180% multi-shot and plus 75% reload speed for 15 seconds. That's really nice. Um, sometimes people misread or misinterpret Shotgun Vendetta. You don't need to get every kill within 5 meters. Just as long as you get a kill within 5 meters every 15 seconds, you'll keep this buff just up all the time. And because this is a shotgun, you're going to get a kill every 15 seconds within 5 meters. Like one kill and then and then it would uh it'll stay up the whole time. So it's not that hard to keep up. Uh, the other thing I was considering was primary frostbite because primary frostbite is also multi-shot and it's critical damage, but the weapon has garbage critical chance. We're not really going for critical chance, so I would actually just rather have the uh, uh the multi-shot and reload speed. Also frostbite makes us switch our build up for a cold build, which on a like one of the the perks of cold is you get more crit damage and again we don't really have crit on this build so uh between the frostbite and v vendetta i i think vendetta is the winner there okay so this is the damage build that i came up with but there is a second it's involving these two slots right here it's involving the semi shock and cannonade slot and the vigilante armament slot there's a second um damage setup that i just kind of wanted a head-to-head -head test with this one and I figured I would do it on video. I thought it would be fun to, to just kind of see which one beats it out. So semi shock and cannonade is very powerful. It's 240% flat damage and it's punch through punch through is amazing on uh, shotguns and secondary weapons with semi cannonade. And it's because otherwise they have really poor ways of getting punch through. They just have a mod that says punch through and that's it. You don't get anything else with it. Um, but with Cannonade, you get both. You know, you get flat damage and punch through. So, very powerful mod. Vigilante Armaments, if we scroll over all the way over here. If we look here, I have 21 multi-shot. If I take off Vigilante Armaments, I I'm losing about 25%-ish. About 25% of my multi-shot is gone by taking it off. So, this is like almost a 25% buff. So, even though this doesn't look very powerful, it is pretty damn powerful. 
Um, but let's uh, let's consider two other mods. Let's consider two other mods because because this is kind of what was uh, racking my brain this morning, and I'm like, eh, I'll do the testing on the video, and we'll see which one wins. So this weapon or, or this setup right here that I have does not have any fire rate. The router is incredibly slow. It is really, really slow. So semi shock and cannonade is nice, but you, it, it locks your fire rate. You can't put fire rate on when you have semi shock and cannonade. So you get punched through with this one, but you're stuck with a really slow weapon. So I was considering possibly instead of semi shock and cannonade, putting a fire rate mod. Uh, either shock and barrage for 90 fire rate or repeater clip for 105. Uh, this one requires you to aim and it only triggers after you reload. It's not very hard to keep this buff up. Like it's pretty damn easy. But some people just don't like to aim in. So I'll probably just do it with shotgun barrage because I think most people would use shotgun barrage over repeater clip. But if you want to min max and you don't mind aiming, repeater clip will be 15% better. So, shock and barrage over semi shock and cannonade, so we can actually get fire rate on this router. And then the other one over vigilante armaments is uh, elementalist, shock and elementalist. So, again, if we look at the build here, I mean, we have two really powerful dots we have heat and we have slash that we're producing. And we're, we're producing a good amount of these guys. Um, well, shock, shock and elementalist will give us more status damage. And allow us allow those uh, those dots to do more damage. So I thought shock and elementalist is also a very powerful pick, possibly over vigilante armaments. My my cat is trying to jump into the window. He's probably going to miss and fall on the floor. Oh, he made it! Oh my goodness, you made it, Dobby. Good job. So we'll do the testing for five minutes with this setup. This is like the slow. Uh, old hillbilly farmer get off my lawn shotgun and then we'll do the testing with the faster router with elementalist on and we'll see how they do head to head um, elementalist gets most of its value much later in the game when enemies can, can like live for a few dot ticks so I have a feeling elementalist might not pull its weight until like way later which we're not going to test we're only going to be five minutes in um but just consider that consider if you're doing like level cap or something or or like hours into a, a survival or something like that uh you might want to do element elementalist will start pull pulling its weight very well so okay let me stop running my mouth let's do five minutes with this this here and then we're going to do five minutes with the um uh fire rate and elementalist here so I'm going to take off Nakana because we're not going to be using that. We're just going to use uh, well, the Router. Uh, I'm going to do this on a big dumb Inaros with uh, no Archon Shards that increase weapon performance. No mods or Arcanes on the Inaros that increase weapon performance. And with a Sentinel with no Sentinel weapon and no mods on the Sentinel that increase weapon performance. All right, let's get this little Router in there. See how he does. Go on a solo. Mot. Their rage is vehement, their focus impressive. Give them all warriors death. I'll cast my three once in a while to give myself stagger immunity, but that's the only thing I'm going to be pressing. Cut off. They're trying to choke you out. Hold all right. On. I'm sending auxiliary. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh, that's a good tile set right here. Good tile set to get started. Look at his fire rate, though. I mean, we have puncher. That, that's like the positive with this is that we can hit two dudes at once, or actually more than two dudes at once. So you want to be lining enemies up with this setup here. This is the this is the get off my lawn shotgun right here. Feel like a true southerner. I 
I'll test this one up against the uh, the fire rate one. Now the fire rate one will not be able to punch through, but it's going to shoot damn near twice as fast, which also means that it's going to get uh, twice as many um, status procs too, which is why it's a, a better combo with uh, uh, shotgun elementalist. Now, Vigilante Armaments is good on both of them, right? Vigilante Armaments is good on the uh, high fire rate and the low fire rate build. Uh, but we just can't fit it on on the uh, other one with um, Shotgun Elementalist. But if you had a Ribbon that could compress stats somehow and you were able to like free up a mod slot, consider putting Vigilante Armaments on uh, that other build when we get to it. Best ribbon stats for this weapon are is going to be multi shot. So most most shotguns in the game, the best ribbon stat is going to be multi shot, just because they have above average multi shot already, which means you get more out of the actual stat. Which is why vigilante armaments is powerful on this weapon, whereas like most weapons, it's pr it's very mediocre. So for ribbons, multi shot. Um, definitely not critic crit damage. That, they're kind of the loser stats on this because it's more of a status weapon. Maybe uh, multi-shot status chance? Status chance might be nice. And flat damage? That's probably what I would go for. It might not be the, the most optimal. Multi-shot is definitely the most optimal uh, top stat. I just don't know if status chance and damage would be the next. Maybe. Or an element. Maybe like an element to be able to free up a slot. Like heat to increase your heat weighting even more. Could be cool. We got violence out here. Get some of this unga bunga damage violence. Unga Bunga damage actually usually does pretty good against uh, Acolytes. See, I'm trying to, like, get two hits with every shot. I'm always trying to have each... Because it's so slow, you really want to make the most of every shot. So I'm trying to, like, always have dudes kind of lined up. Uh, the next five minutes, it's not going to be as important. I mean, it'll still be important because, uh, you know, your pellets that don't hit one target could hit another dude behind them. Or, like, to the left or right, I should say. I completely missed, like, two shots there. All right, ten seconds. I got a pretty good tile set here. I was pretty lucky. Hopefully the next run gets a good tile set, too, so we can, like, evenly compare them. All right, that's it. That's it. Five minutes. Let me head over there. What are we at? We're at 275. 275. So I'm going to get to extraction. I'm going to write that on my little paper I have in front of me here, 275. So we're looking for the uh, next build to beat 275 by a lot, right? Like we're always looking for builds to beat the other one by a lot. If they only beat them by a little bit, it's not super conclusive. All right, I just wrote down 275 for the uh, slow uh, extra multi-shot build. I kind of overformed my router this morning so I could uh, do these tests on the video. I was like, I think it would be fun to do the test on the video. And to do that, I would have to overform it. 
So we're going to pop those two off. We're going to put fire rate. And I said I was just going to use shock and barrage here instead. It's fine. And shemi, shock and cannonade, which is this polarity. So I can go ship boop and it should fit. So now we have fire rate. Oh, no, no. not What did I do here? Elementalist. What are you doing, Salt? You damn dummy. Shock and elementalist. Status damage. Okay, so we have fire rate now and we have status damage. Let's check this guy out. Let's check it. We're looking to beat 275. Uh, something you do have to consider, though, like I was saying before, Elementalist doesn't really start pulling its weight until later. So you, if it can get to 275, if it, if it could be even with the other one at 275, you do have to give the Elementalist build a little bit of props because it's going to get better and better, you know, from that point on. Honor them. Quick deaths and so we'll see. We'll see. But this will be much faster. No puncher, though. No puncher on this one. I'm going to put some status immunity on. And we'll we'll start slaying. Oh, perfect. Same tile set as last time. So with this, I'm because it has no punch through and because it's like dots, I actually kind of want to spread the damage out and and have the dots do a lot of my work for me for maximum efficiency. Got to get that maximum efficiency. You know what I'm saying? That's how I live my life. Max efficiency. I don't even get up to use the bathroom. I, I wear diapers. That's how you get max efficiency, okay? What real that's what real gamers do. That if I ever uh, get to the point where I'm popular enough to have like merch and stuff, that's gonna be the first piece of merch I do is going to be Salt Prime Pro MLG gaming diapers. And then on the ass of the diaper it's gonna say maximum efficiency. Never leave your computer. I missed a lot of my shots there. Come on, Salt. Don't play like a dummy. We're trying to one-for-one one test this thing. Yeah, I'm missing your shots. I'm trying to spread like each shot out so we get the most out of the uh, the dots. So there's a big update today. I do my videos in the morning, so like the update hasn't hit yet. Um, so I was like, I'll just do the router video today, and then uh, I'll work on getting those weapons um, to put out like pretty soon. Whatever they are. I forgot what they're called, the new weapons. Kind of hurting on life support here, unfortunately. Hoping I pick up some because that's gonna like waste 30 seconds running to life support. Nah, let me let me hit this one here. I'll hit two of them. Maybe I'll I'll, I'll give this run like an extra 15 seconds because I'm gonna be hitting life supports here. So we'll we'll give this run five minutes and 30 seconds just to be uh, fair. Let's head back up there. Or 15? Maybe that was 15. Let's give it an extra 15 seconds. 
Because the last run didn't have to, uh, like, stop to hit life supports. So we'll do 5 minute 15 seconds. I don't know, though. I'm, I'm feeling like this one is a little bit weaker. Again, we, do, we know that Shotgun Elementalist, you don't really get much out of it until, like, way later on. So, I mean, that could be the reason. It is very powerful, but it's, like... It, it's really shitty early, and then it gets very, very powerful later. We got 15 more seconds of killing. When you are ready, go to extraction. Two more seconds. All right, that's it. That's it. Okay, let's head over in this direction. 197. 197. Okay, let me write that down real quick. 197. Um, there's one thing I I might want to do one more run. There's one thing I was considering. Uh, this build, I don't believe it has flat damage. I think it's just elemental damage. So let me just tweak this with one uh, change and see if there's any difference. Extraction is ready. So the other, uh, the other one had flat damage with... Uh, with Cannonade. This one doesn't. I believe it's just all elemental damage. So let me let me just see if switching the arcane changes anything like meaningfully. You know we're only doing five minute runs, so it's not too bad. So I'm gonna go route up. I'm just gonna pop off Vendetta real quick, and I'm gonna pop on just the <laughs> the old standby, the old damn standby that we always use, which is uh, merciless here. Primary Merciless, and that'll be our flat damage. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, we are getting flat damage, though, with Savvy. Shit. Ah. We are getting flat damage. I don't think Merciless would make a big difference. Let's do five minutes with Merciless and see. Let's just let's just do five minutes with Merciless and see. I forgot about Savvy, though. We are getting flat damage with Savvy. So, I don't think Merciless is going to make much of a difference. Shit, that that might mean that the uh, the hillbilly shotgun might be the way to go. The slow hillbilly shotgun will punch through. Their rage is vehement. Their focus impressive. Give them all warriors death. Come on, give me the same tile set. Give me the same tile set. Life support has been cut off. They're trying to choke you out. Hold on, I'm sending auxiliary life support. <laughs> So Savvy's flat damage, but it's conditional flat damage. Like, you need to, like, hit the dude before. So you only get, like, that flat damage on, like, the second shot. So, like, Merciless could do better. We'll see. That's not bad right here. This is, uh, this is a decent farming spot. I have that big room behind me, but it's got, like, long, narrow hallways. Actually, if this weapon had punch through, I might say this is a little bit of a cheaty, uh, a little bit of a cheaty farming spot. But this is not a punch through weapon so I don't have to worry about like hitting the entire spawns all at once it is feeling better with merciless here savvy is powerful but it, but it's conditional flat so that's the only problem it's still like uh, it's still the mod to go on, on that slot it's just that um, it might not be enough flat. You still want the status chance out of it, though. It's very uh, important. 
So you get status chance and flat with it. It's just that it's conditional. On enemies already having statuses on them. Well, this is a really good friggin' tile set. If this doesn't beat it this time, I'd be surprised. I mean, this is basically just one hallway I'm shooting down. I actually kind of wish they will spawn more on these sides, because otherwise it, it might be a little bit too cheaty here. Even though this doesn't have punch through, I, like, everything's hitting because I can just aim in the center of that hallway. We'll shoot to the sides, too. That way we're not, like, being too cheaty there. You know, this is a lot of testing for a weapon that I don't think is best to be built out for damage. But, you know, in uh, in the spirit of science, we're going to test it. Let me try to do what I was doing in the last one, where I, I do one shot into each dude and let the statuses do the rest. Not hurting on light, life support as much as last one. I was I was in the red at three minutes last time. I'm almost at four minutes now, and I haven't been in the red yet. So I think this is doing better than the last run with Vendetta. So I'm saying you can't sleep on Merciless and Deadhead. They're boring. They're boring. I hate Merciless and Deadhead. I hate that they go on 99% of builds. But unless you have flat damage somewhere else on the build, most of the time you have to go with... Uh, Merciless or Deadhead, unfortunately. Now, on the on the Hillbilly one, the, the slow one, we get a crap load of flat with uh, Cannonade. So you can go Vendetta easily. Alright, we're in the red for life support, but we're, we're getting close to the end. I think I can do this without hitting a life support. Five more seconds. All right, we're looking to beat that 275 number with the shotgun uh, one, uh, the hillbilly one got. Oh, 221, 221. Still didn't beat it. Damn. The uh, the slow hillbilly setup. Okay. I, I actually thought the slow hillbilly setup might win. I value punch through a lot of times more than I value uh, fire rate. So I had a feeling it would win, but I, I just wanted to give it a a fair matchup, and I wasn't sure if without flat damage it would be a fair matchup. So what was that? 2-2-1? Two, 2-2-1. Two, one. So, two, two, one. so that one got 2-2-1. Two, two, one. Vendetta before that got 197, And then Vendetta with Cannonade got 275. So that, that is a pretty significant increase. So, yeah, the, the slow setup with Punch Through is the way to go. Now, that's not to say the, the slow setup with punch through wouldn't be good without uh, or or without. Uh, let me let me put these back on real quick and I'll. I'll so we got cannonade and multi shot. Okay, so this slow setup right here would still benefit greatly from Shotgun Elementalist because this does get massive value the further and further and further on you are into Steel Path. It's just that you need a Riven to compress stats. And sometimes, uh, 
like usually a Riven has to compress stats for it to to even make it on the build. Uh, you know, like if it has heat, then you would put it over Blaze, maybe or Scattering Inferno. Um, but it would have to compress two stats to be able to let you put another mod on with it. So like if it could compress two stats, you would definitely want to go Shotgun Elementalist because you do get a lot of value out of this. Um, it's just, yeah. So yeah, this is this is the build for the Rauta. It got 275 kills in five minutes. So if we double that, that is 550, which is average to below average. And and that's why I would say that the Rauta is a a weak damage option. It's an option, and that's why I wanted to show it. But it's a weak damage option. I believe the correct way to play the route the Rauta is the uh, the combo way. It's it's the utility build. You. You get yourself up to 12 times, you do your little melee thing, right? And then you just keep it as like a utility uh, tool that if you need to boost your combo back up, boom, it's right there for you. So that was the video. If you guys liked it, consider giving it a like. If you haven't subbed yet, consider subbing or tell me what I can do to earn your sub. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. All right, bye.